so welcome everyone. Um, my name's Ian Scared. I'm the head of marketing at, at HiveMQ. Um, and with me is uh, Yannick Weber, who's a software developer at, at HiveMQ. And we're going to go through um, a presentation about uh, HiveMQ Swarm, our, the HiveMQ's um, testing, uh, IoT testing uh, tool. And um, so to, to get started, I always like to kind of understand where, where people are coming from. So if you could put in the chat, um, just kind of Kind of, kind of where you're located. Um, that would be great to to, to see. Um, just some some housekeeping rules. Um, so the recording of this, this session is going to be recorded. Um, we will send out a follow up email with slides and a, a link to the recording. So if you're interested in that, um, we'll make that available. Um, actually, Yana, can you hear me? I can hear you, Ian. It's, so no one's actually put stuff in the chat. So I'm hoping people can can hear me. Can someone just put in the chat that you can hear me at least? Okay, perfect. Good. Okay. Um, so, um, so, 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 so for some housekeeping, so we'll send out a, a link to the recording um, and, and make it available. Um, we will have lots of time for Q&A at the end. So I'd encourage you to use the, the, the Q&A pod. Um, uh, 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 Zoom. Don't don't put your questions in in the chat. It's actually a lot easier if you just ask a question um, uh, in the Q and A pod, um, and we'll we'll be monitoring there. So th that would be appreciated. Um, so for, for 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 without further ado, we'll we'll get going, and um, we're looking forward to to kind of hearing interacting with you, hearing your, your questions uh, as we go forward. So um, so to to start the session, um, so basically the title is uh, testing scalability um, of a of a robust IoT system with, with confidence. And I think kind of what I'd like to do is start start off to, to kind of talk about kind of why IoT testing is, is important. Um, and, and I think kind of one of the key issues here, right, is, is that um, fixing uh, uh, problems, IoT production errors, is, is very costly in the field. So if you're deploying out um, kind of thousands or hundreds of thousands or millions of devices, and you find start finding problems um, in in the field, um, getting all those devices updated, get, uh, fixing all those devices, fixing any networking issues or, or infrastructure issues can be very costly, right? So it's it's much more beneficial if you can find these these types of things before you go be, before you go live in, in, into into production. Um, the the other thing is that that uh, kind of doing doing kind of load testing and stress testing. Um, is really important in terms of doing determine the resilience of the system. Um, IoT systems can be tend to be kind of pretty complex with with lots of different uh, components to it. Um, so on the back end, if you're running in the cloud, there would be potentially a Kafka cluster or some type of database, some type of enterprise services there. Um, there would be security uh, services in, involved in, in a large scale system, and it's really important that you you're able to test the, the system end to end. Um, from the devices, kind of all the devices connecting, and how the data flows and the security flows through through the entire system, um, to to really get a kind of a good handle on the resilience of the overall system. Um, capacity planning, um, determining how much infrastructure you need, how much uh, how, many, how much kind of servers you need, how many VMs you need, um, is is very important, and so that always leads into budgeting. Um, so you can actually start to understand how much what your infrastructure costs will be um, for for doing for hosting a, a deployed system, and and this is kind of can come out of of a kind of really good IoT, IoT testing. Um, so some kind of kind of what are the challenges of, of doing doing this? Um, and I think kind of one of the things that's pretty unique in terms of IoT systems is these systems are massively distributed, right? If you have cars driving around the world, essentially, right? If, if you're an automobile manufacturer and have a connected car platform, um, and all those these cars are connecting into your your, your platform, right? These are these systems are kind of kind of basically you're getting data from kind of millions of points globally. Right, and so how do you test that that complexity of the system? How do you test kind of network network connectivity issues um, in, in in these types of systems? And and so that that kind of I think is pretty unique in, in terms of, of IoT systems. Um, and this leads to often kind of your test environments are different from production behavior. Right, it's simulating. Um, 
load on a server, right, is, is very different than having one client just hammering a server as hard as possible, right? Because the profile of having millions of clients hitting a, pro, a server is very different than, than having kind of, kind of 100, kind of 100 or 200 clients trying to, to mimic high, high load. Um, and so this is, gets to kind of where kind of often people get ca caught up in that the, your test environment is, is very different from, from the production behavior. Um, and then kind of individual IoT devices can have multiple complex behaviors, right? Um, so a car can be doing um, receiving telemetry or um, publishing telemetry data. It could be receiving um, data for, for traffic information. Um, how do you start to simulate and, and coordinate all, all this different behavior? And, and each car can be executing behavior in, in independently of, of, of anything else. Um, and this is really, really gets to the, the variability of, of, of an IoT production system, right? Is there's no kind of, the variability comes from, from peaks in terms of, of traffic, but it also comes from, from the, the systems being very, very distributed, very, very independent of each other. Um, and so this really comes to kind of how do you get to testing at massive, massive scale? And this is, these are the things that our customers have been telling us for, for a long time. Um, one of their challenges of, of kind of rolling out a large scale um, IoT system, um, specifically based on, on, on MQTT. Um, and so, kind of in summary, right, kind of your clients can be massively distributed. You can have lots of them. Um, and it's very hard to set up this, this, this distributed environment with, with lots of different devices um, in, in a testing and, and staging environment. Um, kind of the traditional testing where you're testing uh, services, single systems, um, they, this, is, this is kind of the traditional IT testing and the testing tools that you, kind of people are used to using um, are really geared to kind of testing kind of systems kind of within a data center um, and, and kind of testing the, the interactions between kind of tens or hundreds of different services, not the millions or hundreds of thousands of, of devices coming in. Um, and so really, I think kind of one of the conclusions that we have when we're working with our customers and kind of they're struggling with, with a lot of their testing is that um, a lot of the technologies for, for doing um, kind of testing of, of services um, really were kind of designed what we call for the internet of, of humans. Um, and we need to take a fresh look at how you do testing for the Internet of Things. Um, and this is where we'd like to kind of start to introduce you to, to HyperQ Swarm. So Swarm, we, we released um, earlier this year. Um, I believe it was in May of this year. Um, and we've got really good, good kind of response from our customers. And we thought we wanted to kind of, kind of, kind of reintroduce it to, to people that might not be familiar with it. Um, and the, the great, great thing is I'm going to be kind of start talking about five minutes and then Yannick is going to go into a very, very detailed demonstration of, of how you could kind of go through a complete process of, of testing a system in Swarm. Um, so, so kind of at a high level, Swarm is really, a, it's a distributed platform um, that you're able to create kind of real MQT clients, millions up to millions of M MQT clients uh, to test a, 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 a consistent platform. Um, you're able to, to simulate the topics, simulate messages, simulate devices um, using Swarm scenarios. Um, and this basically these, these scenarios are very flexible and kind of you can you can mimic um, really the behavior, the, the, the different types of behaviors that a device can, can do. Um, you can also set up uh, data, data generators to support these, these use cases. Um, and it works in what we would consider a very you, you kind of resource friendly, cloud friendly manner, um, kind of being able to deploy on, on Kubernetes um, and in kind of the, 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 the popular hyperscalers like uh, AWS and Azure. Azure. Um, so the use cases really kind of, we see uh, Swarm being used, uh, certainly load and stress testing is, is probably one of the most common one and capacity planning. And I think that's kind of the use case that, 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 that ENX is going to go through. Um, but really, we also see this as a quality assurance testing um, uh, platform where you can kind of re <clears throat> Um, have this as part of your overall test strategy, um, where you can kind of, when you're doing uh, kind of iterations of, of your application, um, you can kind of go through the scenarios and confirm that that there's no regressions been been introduced. 
um, we do support um, having uh, custom extensions and uh, testing those um, too. So it's it's basically if you've got a sophisticated HiveMQ deployment, we we we'll be able to support you with that. Um, and things like kind of scenario testing that we've talked about, um, device rollout simulations, troubleshooting, um, or uh, or other use cases that um, you can certainly kind of do do with HiveMQ Swarm. So without further ado, um, so actually kind of just final thing to so at a high level, um, there's three components of, of Swarm. So we have a kind of a control center, a dashboard um, for, for kind of controlling uh, Swarm. Um, we have the kind of the simulation environment, which basically is, is there's a commander kind of a control that starts, that allows you to start agents that will simulate the MQD clients. And these agents can be running around the world, right? I think um, that that's kind of one of the key parts of this. And these agents will collect the data and kind of input, kind of add them into a, a database that you can see, see the results. And then basically your, your system under task would be a broker, but also importantly, kind of you can have different extensions being, being tested here too. Um, so kind of the life cycle is you create, and Yannick will be going through this in much more detail. You create a scenario, um, which is kind of an XML file. Um, you execute the, the simulation with the commander, and then we get a report created, and then you repeat. Okay, so that's that's a really quick introduction. I'm going to stop sharing, Yannick, and then you can start sharing. Okay, my name is Yannick Weber. I'm one of the main developers of HiveMQ Swarm. And today I'm going to introduce you how to work with HiveMQ Swarm. So what we are uh, trying to do today is we're going to test a running HiveMQ setup um, with HiveMQ Swarm. Our setup looks uh, pre uh, pretty straightforward. We have a HiveMQ cluster, which is formed by three independent HiveMQ nodes that together form one logical MQTD broker. Uh, everything of this is running on Kubernetes. Um, yeah, and they uh, those nodes uh, form together a cluster, which then acts as one MQTD bro broker that the clients then see. Um, the loads that we observe on the uh, on the broker that we want to test is um, uh, we gathered from a, from a dashboard. Uh, on the left, you can see uh, you can see the dashboard, and if we read uh, carefully what the dashboard uh, tells us, we can uh, come to a conclusion how the current uh, system looks. So, um, what we what we see is about uh, twenty k connections currently um, per minute. We see uh, incoming MQTT connect messages about ten k per minute. Uh, it lo looks a little fuzzy, but it evens out to uh, to ten k here. And then when we have a look at incoming and outgoing publishers, we also see uh, around about 10K incoming and outgoing, which then would be uh, the scale we are cur currently having on the system uh, if, we, if we go ahead. What the big thing is that we want to see today is can we scale up? We have uh, with HiveMQ, we also always have the ability to just add another HiveMQ nodes mic on uh, our cluster bigger and therefore be prepared for no more nodes. But we do not want to overscale uh, our HiveMQ uh, cluster because uh, then we, we will get a lot of infrastructure costs that we eventually don't need. And also, we want to be confident uh, that our deployment is going to sustain the load that's coming to it. But we are going to find out today if we can scale up our deployment to 2x or even 4x. So uh, what 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 that means is uh, when we scale up to 2x is that we actually double the amount of loads that is uh, that is coming into the broker, which are about 40, 40k current connections, 20k um, incoming um, connect packets per minute, and 20k outgoing and incoming publishers. And also we can even go further and go 4k and so on and so on. Um, how our swarm setup looks uh, is uh, pretty, uh, pretty much as, as Ian told you before. Uh, we have a scenario XML, which we are going to design later. Then we have HiveMQ Swarm, which actually introduces uh, and simulates the load on the broker. Swarm itself is a distributed platform as HiveMQ itself. It, uh, it consists of a commander and multiple agents. On our deployment here, we have three of those. I can show you the deployment in detail later. <laughs> and yeah. 
then I'm um, going to give you a quick overlay, overlook of how the deployment looks. I just have to unshare here. Um, so this looks uh, pretty, uh, pretty straightforward. Uh, here we see on Lens how our Kubernetes setup looks. We have um, three hyphen Q nodes here. Then we have uh, the hyphen Q operator, which we won't go into detail now. Um, then we have three swarm agents and the swarm commander, all running on Kubernetes. And we can also see how it's doing right now. Uh, there's absolutely nothing happening on it because there are no clients connected, but we are going to change this pretty soon. What we are now going to do, if we come back to the slides, uh, to this slide here, we are going to design the scenario that is going to, uh, that will then be executed by swarm uh, which will in turn create load on the hyphen Q cluster. So we see some actions happening here on the on the Grafana dashboard where we monitor our deployments. Let's hop right into designing such a scenario. First, uh, we go back to having a look at how our numbers looked. We have uh, 20k current connections, 10k incoming connects, 10k incoming and outgoing publishes. When we when we dis, uh, disassemble uh, what we see here, we came up that we have maybe uh, two kinds of clients uh, which, are, which are doing uh, stuff on uh, on the deployment. We have 10K uh, connectors. We call them connectors because they basically uh, are, uh, are the reason why we see incoming connects because uh, most of the time a client comes and stays connected, but they, are, uh, they seem to disconnect and, uh, and reconnect every time. Then we also see publishers. Um, they will create publish messages and also will uh, will consume them uh, around 10k. Also, so then we, then all all things add up to 20k, and they they will create the publishers we see here, and they will create the connects. So then we are going to uh, turn this into a scenario. The first thing every scenario needs to have is we declare the broker. So the um, MQDD clients we are going to simulate will know where to connect to. This is done by the brokers tag. Um, as I said before, we have a logical cluster of um, hyphen Q nodes, so we only need to declare one broker in our scenario. Here in the address, we just give the address of the Kubernetes header service um, and only have one here. Then we are going to create clients. First, we are going to create the connectors because they are a little bit easier to, uh, to write down to get started. We create a client group and then we create the connectors. Uh, we, we provide the ID of the client group and a client ID pattern. So every member of the client group will get a, uni, a unique MQDT client ID. Uh, that is created from that regex pattern. So the first connector in this client group will have the idea, the ID uh, connector dash 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, and the next one 0, 0, 0, 0, 2, and so on. Uh, everything is done by this regex. So uh, later on, every client ID will also be matched by this regex. We give this client group a count of 10,000. Actually, because... yeah, next, yeah, sorry, can I interrupt? There, there's a question that I think might be useful. Oh, okay, to... uh, cool. Um, so can, can you clarify what you mean by incoming publishing versus outgoing publishing? Okay, um, of course I can. Um, let me pull up uh, the, um, here we have our, our hyphen Q cluster. And when clients connect to it and create data, they move data uh, data there, which are incoming publishers. A client publishes their data to uh, to the broker for an outcome going publishers are when a client is subscribed, it's going to receive publishes. Receiving then will uh, receive publish will then be counted as an outgoing publish. Um, I hope this is uh, clear now. Uh, Perfect. Sorry, sorry. Keep on going. Thank you. Uh, yeah. Thank. Uh, thanks for the question. Anyway. So um, we, as we created our client group, uh, we are going to create now the behavior. Uh, Swarm has, has two concepts here, which are stages and life cycles. 
Stages are stages of the whole scenario, which are, uh, cr which are executed sequentially. So first we uh, execute one stage, then we execute the next stage and so and so on. Um, a stage consists of life cycles. A life cycle is directly entangled to the client group. A cli life cycle defines the behavior of a client group in uh, one stage. So we can only have one life cycle per client group per stage. So uh, in the beginning, uh, we are going to uh, create the first stage. We call it a uh, simulation. And then we are going to add uh, the life cycle for our client group connectors. Let me steal that from here. So you don't have to watch me typing the whole time. So the life cycle of the connectors will look some, something like this. Uh, first, we have a delay command because we don't want to have all uh, clients connect at once. We uh, want to even it out. Um, by, we do it, uh, we achieve this by uh, giving a delay duration and the spread linear. A linear spread means that the first client in the client group will uh, wait zero seconds and the last client in the client group will wait one minute. Therefore, the client uh, in the middle of the client group, which, has, uh, uh, which is the 5,000th client, will wait 30 seconds. So we get this nice evenly spread out behavior so we don't see one spike and then nothing and then one spike again. Now we have a for command, which is uh, those who are um, familiar with programming is just a loop. Um, we read this, uh, we do the behavior inside the for command 10 times with a rate of one per one minute. So this will be, everything inside here will be done once in a minute. We read life cycles from the perspective of one client in the client group. So the client then connects to the broker. It waits for 50 seconds and then disconnects. So we see that the client is online most of the time, but has some fluctuation with its connections behavior. It will uh, come online, wait a little bit, go offline, and then come online again. So are there any questions up until now? Let me qu quickly check. I yeah, did, did. There is a quick question here. So a client that is outgoing publishing must have a different client to get to the message. I guess that is what you call incoming publish. So when you say 10,000 connections, there are 5,000 that publish and 5,000 subscribe. Is, so when you say 10,000 connections, are each of them is half are the, the publishing and half are subscribing or, or do 10,000 do both? Uh, we, we, we will come to, uh, to publishing in a minute. Um, okay. uh, now we are only only talking about uh, just the the ones that send the MQTT connect packets and disconnect. We are uh, we'll, we'll, which are uh, when we have a look at the board we are observing, uh, which is this behavior we are looking to simulate, uh, which are incoming MQTT connect packages. Um, okay. So uh, then we will uh, create another client group, uh, which will be the publishers which is a little bit misleading. Uh, maybe we give this another name. Um, this also uh, will, be just, will be of count uh, 10,000. Uh, we will also provide them with a client ID pattern, um, super similar to what we did above, but they will have a different behavior. So we create a different um, client group here. First up, um, we will also create a topic and now things are going to start uh, to become interesting. For topics, we create topic groups. Topic groups are just um, just group up different uh, topics that are similar in, in how the clients interact with them. Um, this topic group will also have a pattern. So the uh, so the every topic in this topic group will have publisher dot 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 zero. Uh, dot one. So the first topic will have a zero, then the next will have a one, then a three, and so on. And everything will match to this regex. We call this publishers because we want to create a unique topic for every publisher, um, which uh, which means because we have uh, the same number here and here, that uh, once uh, once we connect uh, uh, these uh, these two concepts, every 
every publisher will have their own topic in there. So um, first of all, uh, we what we want to do is we want to connect the publishers. Uh, we will create another stage. Uh, we call it setup. We are. Uh, well, what he happens here is we just uh, connect and subscribe to uh, to the topic group here. Because we, um, the client group and the topic group have the same size, every client here will pick out one topic of the topic group and subscribe to it. Okay, um, now we are set up. We can add another lifecycle in the simulation uh, for our publishers. Um, it's this life cycle here, and what uh, what the what the client does is once once we are in stage simulation, the client will begin to publish ten times with a rate of one publish per one minute, which will also mean that we have uh, that we have uh, the uh, the number we see of ten thousand because every client uh, is doing is doing that, so we have ten thousand publishes per minute. So when a client publishes, it will create an incoming publish from the perspective of the broker. It moves data to, pro to the broker. As the, publishers are also as the publishers are also subscribed to their unique single topic, they will receive the same publish back. And so we see one outgoing publish from the perspective of the broker. Uh, let, us get, uh, let us get over the stages and the life cycles here once again. So we have two stages. The first is the setup stage, um, where we connect our publishers. So every client in this client group will uh, connect and subscribe. And once all clients are done with that, we can transition to the next stage, which will be this actual simulation. Here we have two life cycles. The first one for the connectors and the second one for the publishers. Um, life cycles are executed in parallel. So um, they are done by every client, and this uh, stage then ends after every client has client group has executed their life cycles. So uh, they will simulate the disconnecting and reconnecting behavior, and this client group will just simulate the publishes. So uh, now we are done uh, with creating the scenario, and uh, we are then ready to execute it. Uh, to do so, I'm using the MQTT CLI, uh, which will create, uh, which will connect to uh, to Swarm's uh, to Swarm's commander, and we are, we will move our scenario to Swarm's commander, where it then starts to execute the scenario. Uh, we just uh, have our scenario here uh, and punch in the commands, and we see we upload it to the to the commander. It's uploaded and Swarm is starting to execute the scenario. Yeah, now we are in stage one, which should take about a minute. And let's have a look at the dashboard. And what we see, uh, it takes a bit uh, to, uh, so we see, oh, here we see stuff happening. We see uh, connections going up because clients are beginning to connect to, uh, to Swarm, uh, to HyphenQ. Also, we see uh, some incoming MQTT connect messages uh, for the for the publishers, and uh, this is going to uh, to start now. We also see subscriptions because the publishers are also subscribing, and sessions uh, being created. Um, as this uh, scenario runs for a bit and until we can see interesting stuff happening, I will uh, be ready to answer some questions. So. Um, Ian, uh, do you see any incoming questions right now? Um, so it was uh, still, I'm, I'm kind of just back to the, the question about the 10,000 connections. Is that is that 10,000 are all publishing and subscribing or is it 5,000 publishing and 5,000 subscribing? It's um, it's uh, 10,000 are, uh, are connecting and disconnecting and 10,000 are uh, subscribing and publishing. Okay. So uh, they are add, adding up to 20,000. Okay. So yeah, no, no other questions right now. So, um, okay. 
So now we are going to see uh, something uh, something happening on here. Um, when we when we look at the output of Swarm, we already reached uh, the simulation stage, which should take about ten minutes. And uh, what we are seeing now is uh, it it's beginning to ramp up to to our publish rates. Um, we see uh, twenty. Um, we now see about twenty k uh, current connections, and also we see connects incoming uh, now even out to 10k and the publishers will then also reach the 10ks uh, soon now they are they are 10k and uh, if we let this run for for a while we will see that it's probably going to run very stable because we also uh, because this is the state of the deployment we are having right now but what we want want to do is we want to eventually test if we can scale up uh, scaling up, we can have a look back uh, here. Uh, this uh, means that we will go, be going to double uh, the numbers in, in the scenario. We can do this right now while the other scenario is, is being executed. We are uh, going here, we are going in here. And uh, what, we, what we can do um, we will just double the amount of simulated clients, which will then double up the amount of load we see on the broker. So we are doubling up the, uh, the publishers and the connectors. As we now have 20,000 uh, 20, connectors, uh, which are executing this lifecycle, uh, we see then 20 connect, 20K connects per minute and disconnects per minute because uh, every client in this client group runs runs through this life cycle then. The same is true for the publishers. Um, as we have 20k publishers, every one of those uh, will uh, will publish uh, will publish once a minute, which then accounts to 20k publishers per minute incoming outcome outgoing because the uh, publishers also subscribe to their own topic, which reminds me that we also need to double up the amount of topics because we want every client to have their their own topic exclusively. It, so it, that... it, yeah, next. So, so could we have a scenario where clients are publishing and then another set of clients would be subscribing? Of course we can. Um, okay. It's it's just, uh, we're just doing this, uh, that the clients are publishing to their own topic and subscribing to their own topic. So we can uh, match the 10K incoming, 10K outgoing um, uh, really, uh, really precisely. But we, uh, but we, we can of course just create another client group here, uh, call this, uh, just copy that one and call it subscribers and uh, create, uh, create a life cycle here, uh, call it subscribers uh, for, the, for the client group subscribers. And they will just subscribe to the, to the topic too. Um, and that will, uh, will then also, inc that will then increase the amount of outgoing publishers because we now have more subscribers than publishers, which means that every uh, publish gets distributed to not only one client, but to two clients. Great. So uh, let me reverse everything I did here real quick. And then we can have another look at the dashboard. Um, now we are about uh, 10k uh, publishers outgoing, publishers incoming. We see about 20k current connections. We also see the 10k incoming uh, connect packages of those clients who connect, wait, and disconnect, and then connect again because of the for loop. Um, what's interesting about HiveMQ is we see 20k subscriptions, which which is a little bit odd in the first glance because we only have 10,000 clients subscribing. But this is actually uh, related to how HiveMQ um, handles subscriptions because HiveMQ is a distributed system and wants to ensure that no data gets lost. So HiveMQ replicates the subscriptions not only on one node, but on two, which then accounts to 20K subscriptions here because we replicate the subscription. So once uh, when we lose a node in our cluster, we don't, do not lose the subscription, which is uh, one of the uh, uh, things that HiveMQ does very well. 
So let me just do this. <laughs> and yeah, um, we are still in the simulation, which uh, um, until we can scale up, um, makes me open for another question if we have any. Yeah, so there's a question about um, TLS certificates. So um, are we, do you have enabled TLS on, on these client connections or can, can that be enabled? In the um, yeah, it, uh, it can be done. Um, uh, but this uh, this would be a little more complicated because then we uh, we need to create um, then we need to create a plugin for Swarm that provides the TLS certificate to the client. Um, what we what we also can do is we can use insecure TLS uh, when we um, uh, use transport TLS here. Uh, there we don't use certificates, but the uh, uh, clients are using are then using. Um, FMQs uh, hyphen, uh, hyphen Q over TLS that will create a TLS centric, but do not provide a client certificate by themselves. We also would need to change up the, the port because hyphen Q's TLS port is uh, 8883. Okay. Um, another question, if, if you have time? So, yeah, I have. Okay. Um, does the size of the payload matter in the scenarios where you're testing? Uh, absolutely. Uh, now we we are not simulating the uh, uh, the size of the payload, but we can do that very easily. Uh, we can go in here and just um, create a um, create a payload uh, with thirty characters and a payload generator. <coughs> so, um, what would be the default? Like, what would kind of if, if you don't specify it, is there a default? Uh, now, now uh, as we now we're not uh, generating payloads, so every uh, published will be empty. Okay. Um, but uh, but of course the payload uh, the payload size ma um, matters immensely because if we have super big payloads uh, then we we'll have uh, a lot a lot more traffic going through uh, through the TCP connections. Um, uh, in in our case here for the demonstrations we are not simulating the size of the payload, but it's uh, um, it's uh, r really easy to do uh, with Swarm. Uh, so maybe we can just say hello and then every every publish that we publish will uh, contain the, the message hello. Okay. Okay, uh, we're still in our simulation. Um, and we have a look here. Yeah, it's about, it's running for uh, for eight minutes now. Uh, we should be, uh, should be finished now. Uh, everything looks super stable right now as we are expecting. Uh, which would then make us, uh, let's just scale up the scenario, not the one that I have for showing, but the other one. And we just increase the numbers to 20,000. And once the scenario is finished, we can uh, go in and start the scaled up scenario. Uh, should be just a matter of minutes until this one is finished. Um, if we, if we've got another question. Does um, I'm not sure if so. Does any gateway adapter API? In, is there any gateway adapter API involved? If yes, will affect the performance? Um, I don't believe kind of there's there's any adapter then, API involved here. Right? No, we no we don't have any. The only uh, the only thing that we have in our um, our scenario is the Kubernetes headless service, which does the load balancing for us. But we do not have anything like gateways or adapters in here. No, no such thing. Yeah. Mm, still running, uh, should be done any minute right now. How do we, so for, for large scales, so worrying about TCP resources. Um, so I think my guess is Swarm is really simulating kind of the kind of TCP re resources too, right? Yeah, it, it is because what Swarm uh, under the hood does, Swarm really creates an MQTT client um, and an MQTT connections as an MQTT connection um, is as MQTT is based on TCP, every MQTT connection will also create a TCP connection. Yeah, so I think that's the key here because often lots of low testers don't actually create real MQT clients. Um, so I think that's the key here with, with swarms that we're creating real MQT clients that that simulate kind of the the, the entire stack of networking that's required. 
Yeah, um, that's uh, that's really really key here. Um, we can uh, I can tell you one secret. Uh, MQ, um, Swarm reduces our um, Java MQTT client that we uh, made ourselves. So uh, it really is a real MQTT client uh, that's happy, uh, that's doing stuff. Uh, what we see now is that our scenario is going to uh, to finish because the rates and everything we see here is dropping off. I will have a check. Uh, it's still doing a little thing. Now we are done, um, which enables us to uh, to do another simulation. But um, just for time's sake, I will shorten the scenario a bit uh, by half, which I can do by just uh, uh, reducing the amount of times this uh, for loop uh, will loop and the amount of publishes uh, are created here. So we are we are not uh, going over time with the simulation. Um, I just uh, upload the scenario again. I changed it, uh, command S for sure, and go in again. So, sorry, a question came in. Um, is it possible to cancel scenarios and, and does that lead to auto, auto disconnect the clients? Uh, yeah, yes it is. Um, uh, I, can, I can cancel it. I, I just have to uh, control C in the console and uh, then it will um made a make a http call to the commander which then will uh, will see that we are able to cancel the scenario okay. but uh for now we wanted to see the whole scenario being executed so i can show you the uh, show the drop off at the end and so on certainly if there are other questions um to come in um one of the, the challenges with doing a live demo with with these kind of is uh can we have to wait for, for this simulation to, to execute? So um, if there's questions. Um, so Yannick, do you, do you have an experience of kind of, uh, kind of how, how large of a scenario, kind of a test simulation people are running? And what's um, the largest you've ever seen? I do, uh, I do have experience. Uh, uh, we in HyphenQ use uh, SwarmX uh, a lot, uh, really a lot to test HyphenQ itself. Uh, the largest I ran was 4 million um, on, a, on a relatively small, de um, small testing deployment. Um, yeah, but, uh, but then I also had to scale up HyphenQ Swarm itself uh, to create that uh, a huge amount of load on the cluster. And then how many scenarios would that 4 million, was it to be one scenario or did, is it multiple scenarios? Uh, it was it was one scenario because I, um, uh, like this, I can just go in here and punch in a million and so on. The only thing I have to change is I have to scale up hyphen Q swarm as well. Um, so because uh, the more loads there is to simulate, the bigger hyphen Q swarm uh, has to be, which um, would mean if I come back here, um, that I have to uh, use more swarm agents because the swarm agents are actually the um, the entities that are holding the MQTT clients that simulate the load. Um, when I when I was uh, was testing with uh, uh, with four millions, I had to more more than ten agents or or something like that. I'm not I'm not sure about the exact numbers. Okay, but but you can those agents can run anywhere, right? You can distribute those around out to different cloud platforms. And uh, of course, uh, of course, I can install the uh, the agents on every Linux machine I wish to. I can run them on, on Kubernetes uh, uh, because we have Docker images, so the, that's really flexible where we place the agents. Let me check where we are in the scenario right now. We see 40k subscriptions, but we see some declining in the, uh, oh, now we are back at 20k. Uh, the numbers fluctuate because we only see uh, one, uh, one measurement uh, every 30 seconds. But uh, what I can tell you now is we successfully scaled up the scenario. Um, we are now at 40k uh, concurrent connections and uh, also 40k, uh, 20k uh, incoming connect messages and also um, uh, 20k 
uh, incoming and 20k outgoing uh, MQTT publishers. Um, yeah, we can uh, also have this running a, a little bit. Uh, if there are any questions that I can answer again. No. Okay. Um, actually, how, how do we ex how do we check the exception flow? I'm not sure what they mean by exception flow, but um, uh, I, I'm not sure either. Uh, maybe yeah. the person asking can elaborate. Yeah, so maybe they can do a follow up question. Um, so, so, so what are we seeing? So we're seeing kind of so the connections, the forty thousand, it scaled up to the forty thousand connections, no problem. Um, yes, uh, that's what you're seeing. Uh, So in the end, are we going to see basically kind of, kind of the, 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 the broker, the system under tests that we've set, set up here will, will scale up to doubling the, the traffic? Yes, uh, that's what, what we're seeing right now. We are, uh, we are seeing that all the rates, uh, the rates are there where we expect them. Uh, we expected uh, about 40K, we see 40K. We see it, uh, uh, we expect that 20K incoming outgoing. And uh, we can also, when we when we are going deeper into into how our system looks, we see that uh, that it all runs smoothly through. We see no spikes. Um, we see no uh, we see no nodes leaving the cluster. We see that it runs smoothly. So what we are seeing now, we were able to scale up two times in in our case. Okay. And so if if we weren't scaling up, if we didn't have enough server resources, what, what would typically people would see? If we if we're not scaling, uh, um, yeah, yeah, can yeah, you repeat if you, that one? If if you didn't have enough resources available to for the broker to scale up to the to this level, ah, uh, uh, you mean what, what, uh, what would we see? Uh, we will see uh, as Hyphen Q as Hyphen Q is uh, really equipped uh, to deal with overload scenarios. We will see that Hyphen Q will decide uh, to not let in clients. Uh, we will see that some connections will fail all the time uh, in our metrics because HalfMQ then notices it, it is under, under more stress than it can handle, and then uh, will uh, try to reduce the stress. That's, uh, that's the first thing we see. We will then see that, um, uh, that uh, some, some, uh, some clients are not al allowed to publish because they exceed their, rota, uh, their quotas that are allowed. Um, then we, uh, we would see that HalfMQ is reacting uh, to the stress it is under um, and kind of back pressuring the stress that, that is coming in. Okay, good. <clears throat> so right. uh, I think uh, we can wrap up the demonstration because we uh, uh, we saw the uh, now the uh, now the demonstration is over. I remembered that I made it uh, made it shorter. Uh, we're at the end of the scenario, which uh, is perfect timing uh, timing in my opinion. Um, we can have. Uh, we can see what we uh, what we did today. What we did today is we analyzed um, uh, a deployment, uh, what was happening on it. We saw uh, the monitoring of it and then analyzed it a little bit to get a, again an understanding of of the numbers uh, which were uh, were here. Then uh, we went in and recreated those numbers with a scenario. And on top of that, then we scaled up the scenario with. Uh, for two times to make sure that our system was able to withstand the 2k, uh, the two times scaling up. So we uh, we also uh, answered a lot of questions. Um, then we are back at uh, at the questions, and I can hand over back to you, Ian. Perfect. Well, th thank you, Yannick. Um, really appreciate it, and I really love the, the live demo aspect of it. Um, so I'm hoping uh, this gave everyone a good sense of, of the power of Swarm and what, what you can do and the flexibility of it. Um, we really kind of feedback from our customers has been very positive in terms of of helping them with with their load testing and capacity planning. Um, as Yannick says, we we use it quite a lot internally too. Um, to, to make it um, kind of for, for the testing hive and queue itself, but also working with our customers to, to test um, 
there. So, um, so um, actually, we have a, a, a quick poll. So I don't I don't see any other other questions. Um, if if there are questions, certainly um, you can follow up in in in, in one of the emails um, that we send out to with the 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 slides in the recording um you can certainly ask from those um we do have a, a, a quick poll and it'd be great if you guys could um spend a kind of kind of a minute or two to to answer some of the poll questions um that we have um but i'd like to thank yannick um for the for the for the presentation and i think Thank everyone for, for joining us. Um, again, I apologize about the, the rough start. Um, we usually don't don't have that that much, that big of a problems, but um, we uh, kind of it just, things things sometimes don't go as planned, right? But but thank you everyone, and um, I hope you have a, everyone has a great day. Okay, uh, thank you uh, everyone for listening. Uh, thank you, Ian, for having me. Uh, I wish you a great week. Take care. See you.